Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to my backyard oasis. Now today, because it's Monday, that means in my household, that means it's Mexican Monday. And today, I'm going to be making one of my favorite side dishes with all of my Mexican meals, guacamole. To start off, we're going to have to have these following ingredients. Two ripe avocados, one Roma tomato, one shallot, one jalapeno, the juice of one lime, three minced garlic cloves, and my favorite ingredient, seasoning salt. Now, if you don't have a shallot, that's okay. You can always just use a regular white onion, but just use half of it. So to start off, we're gonna get the avocado cut up and diced in the bowl. So the easiest way to cut an avocado is to get a really sharp knife and start with it standing straight up. I slice it straight down to the pit, and once you get to the pit, you stop. And the easiest way to move around it is to just rotate the avocado around the knife where it's still touching on the pit. And once you've cut it, you take the two halves and you twist. The best way I can say is to remember when you're a kid and you're opening up that Oreo, just twist and they'll pop open. So to get that pit out, it's kind of hard, you don't want to dig at it, just to take your sharp knife again and just drive it into the pit. If you twist, it should pop right out. You don't want to throw the pit away though. The pit is actually great to use if you have leftover guacamole. You always want to cover up the guacamole and put it in the fridge, but don't forget to put the pit in that because it helps it stay fresh and not turn brown. So for my technique, shall we say, I like to take my knife and just run it through the avocado and technically dice it up while it's still in the skin. So I just run my knife lengthwise, then sideways to get those chunks that I want. Next, you're gonna take your spoon and you're going to just spoon out the avocado and straight into the bowl. It'll come out in those bite-sized chunks. For my avocado, I like it slightly chunky but really smooth for my guacamole. So, on to the next half. So my husband and I decided that since I'm the one always cooking in the house, I always have to come up with a meal plan and it was just getting hard. So we sat down one Sunday night and decided to do a meal plan. And by doing the meal plan, it made it so much easier for when he came home from work and it was just, I knew what I was gonna make and I made it. So we decided that every Monday was gonna be Mexican Monday. Cause you know, you hear that people have Taco Tuesday or other stuff like that. but I like tacos, but I don't want to have tacos every Tuesday. So I decided that if we have a Mexican Monday, that leaves it wide open for me to have fajitas one Monday or enchiladas. Um, and today we're going to be making we're going to be making fajitas today. I love fajitas. I love the chicken fajita. So this is going to be our side dish along with our fajitas. Again, just take your knife and run it through. And you can tell that this avocado is really ripe because the knife is just sliding through it like butter. Again, just scoop out the avocado. You just go around the avocado until it all just falls right out. Once we get all the avocado in the bowl, I'm going to be using my favorite tool to help mash up the avocado into the perfect blend of guacamole. All right, my fork. Now you don't want your guacamole too chunky. You want it smooth, but you don't want it too you don't want it too smooth. You do want the taste of the avocado. I love the taste of fresh avocado. Some mornings I'll make um, one of my husband's favorite breakfast dish, huevos rancheros, and there's always, there's always going to be avocado on the side. So it takes a little bit of work just to mash it all together. Whoops. 
This is going to be the toughest part because once you get all the other ingredients cut up, it goes by quick. All right, so here we got most of the avocado all mashed up. And next we're going to get into the other ingredients. So next I'm going to go with the Roman tomato. I usually just cut off the stem piece just because I don't like chewing on that in my guacamole. Once that's cut, got a mess going on here, I cut this and I cut the tomato in half. Once it's in half, the easiest way to cut it up to make it in bite-sized pieces is to cut it in half again. And then just to run your knife slowly through lengthwise. Once you get these little, um, little bite-sized pieces, I just like to do a rough chop all over again just so I get them even smaller, just so the main taste that I get in my guacamole is my avocado. Some people just take a jar of salsa and mix it in with the avocado and call it guacamole. That's no fun. Who wants to have just like regular boring salsa mixed in with their, with their avocado? It just ends up runny and it doesn't taste good all together. So we're going to mix that in. Next is the shallot. Now I'll show you one of my techniques of how I cut the shallot. I will cut it lengthwise in half and then to get those bite-sized pieces you take your knife and horizontally run it through the shallot. That way it's pre-cut technically but it's still all together. Again I'm going to gently press down and cut it lengthwise again but I'm not going to get towards the um, stem part just so it stays intact. Then you're going to just run your knife through the shallot so you get those small bite-sized pieces and it all just fall apart because you made those pre-cuts in the shallot. And you can see how it just all falls apart into these bite-sized pieces. Once it's all mixed together, it's wonderful. So again with the second half, horizontal cut and then along the top cut and then cut again through the remainder of the shallot. Now like I mentioned before you can use a regular onion if you don't have shallots on hand. I do recommend the shallot because it is a milder taste of an onion instead of that pungent strong taste that onions have. And usually when I cut shallots, my eyes don't water and I don't look like I'm crying. So the shallot goes in. And next, I'm going to cut up my jalapeno. Now, like I said before, um, the easiest way to make guacamole not as spicy or just so you can um, control the spice, you can cut it lengthwise and cut out the seeds. But my husband and I, we love the heat. So I just got to cut off the stem and then I basically dice this. I slice and dice is what they say. I'm just going to slice it into little rounds and then do a rough chop just to chop all the pieces so you get those nice bite-sized pieces. Now the best way to get the seeds out would be to cut it in half like I did the shallot and then get the seeds out that way so the heat is not there so much. And like the tomato and like the shallot, if you don't want the huge bite of the jalapeno in each uh, spoonful of guacamole, you're just going to want to mince it. Mince it real good, run your knife through it um, quite a few times and always have a sharp knife to work with. That's the best and easiest tool you're going to have while making this. And add it right in. Now here I have a minced up 
three garlic cloves. Um, this took me a while to do, so I did it previously, but we're just gonna add that right in. You basically wanna do the same thing that you did with the um, jalapeno, just mince up three whole garlic cloves until it gets to about this consistency. You don't wanna chew down and have that garlic stuck in your tooth for the rest of the day. So, have that minced up real good. So for the lime, we're just gonna cut it in half. And the easiest thing is to um, just squeeze it right in instead of squeezing into a dish or whatnot. Just squeeze the lime right in to the guacamole. It's already smelling so good. I watch a lot of Food Network channels and uh, one of my favorite cooks that I watch is Rachel Ray. And she's always saying, I wish they could come out with smell of vision because this smells so good and I wish you could smell this right now. All right, for the last ingredient, we're gonna be adding the seasoning salt. I do a rough eyeball of how much I put in. It's roughly about two teaspoons. So I just shake it in until I know exactly where I want it. All right. Next thing to do is just to mix it all together. So you want it, once you're mixing it, you know, get it all incorporated. And I do have a few chunks left in this one, so I'm going to try to mash it a little bit more. But other than that, we are done. So just so I could make it so a little bit worse for you guys. I brought along some chips because I gotta taste it to see that we did it right. So here we go. Gotta get a little bit of everything on there. Oh, perfect. Perfect, so I hope I've inspired you to get up and create a weekday where you and your family can get together and make meals inspiring and fun. Just like my Mexican Mondays, I hope I can inspire you to have a Mexican Monday of your own. Thanks.